There we go. That's a wise man right there. I would hope you'd say no. No, not I mean, he's kind of like here. a little koala. Well, that's, that's, that's what are you doing back there? I, I, I'm, 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 no, up here. <laughs> up here, koala. <laughs> there ain't no crazy bear in you. You're soft and cuddly. Alright, if you guys want to sit down, we're just going to talk real quick. Cool. I'm going to talk about how cool your purple shirt is with a serious <laughs> face. <laughs> Justin Bieber, did you just compare me to him? <laughs> but does he have a Mishka? Is he watching? Uh, Justin Bieber's <laughs> a teddy bear. Alright. Yeah, he's not a teddy bear. So, what grade is everybody in here? Nine. 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 Ten. Eight. Seven. Eleven. I hope you graduated. I'm in like 25th. I'm like 25th or something like that. Alright. Um, I asked you guys earlier how many of you acknowledge that. At times, life is kind of a drag, and things kind of just fall apart, and kind of tend to stink at times. Um, the past, like I'm real excited to be here because the past two months I've spent pretty much in and out of hospitals. Um, they found a... Can you guys hear me? Yeah. 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 Um, I they do. Found a, <laughs> they found a golf ball sized tumor in my head about two months ago. Um, and it was crazy because I've experienced something like that previously before. Uh, when I was two, they found cancer behind my left eye and told my mom to make my funeral plans at the age of two. Um, and God had other plans, obviously, because I'm still here. Um, I came to find out later that the kind of cancer I had when I was younger, 95% of every child that has it dies. Um, and so... I've always acknowledged the fact that my life's been a miracle, um, but this past year has been probably the roughest um, I've had. Um, the first surgery that they did went real wrong, and they had to redo another surgery, and then it got infected recently, and they had to then hospitalize me again and cut it open and drain the infection, and it's just been a rough year. Like, there's been spiritual attacks on my marriage, on my, you know, different family members, on you know, just people that I love. And if this would have happened about two years ago, I probably would have broken down. Um, I probably would have panicked. I probably would have, you know, doubted God in the situations that I was going through. But though an outsider would say this is the worst year of, you know, possible, to me it's been one of the most encouraging and amazing years of my life. Um, I've felt the peace of God like never before. Um, throughout every situation. I acknowledge the fact when the doctors told me that there was a chance that I might not live through the surgery because it was a difficult surgery. I acknowledge that if that's the will of God, then so be it. Um, and the only reason I was able to do that was because previously in my life, I had spent so much time drawing near to God. Um, a lot of us wait till things get rough to then go to God. And then you have so much going on in your life already that you can't really focus on God. So my encouragement to you guys would be, take the time that you have now, even while you're young, to get close to God. Because life is going to get rough. You think you have it rough now? Getting sent to your room is not rough, okay? Not being able to go to your friend's house for their black and white party, that's not rough, okay? Not being able to borrow mommy's car, that's not rough. Life is going to get rough. Life is going to get real. Okay, my friend Luke, who's also in the ministry with me, um, just got to take home his baby girl, and we were real excited for him just to find out that when he got home, the ambulance that had passed him on his way home with his new baby girl was an ambulance carrying his father. So life gets real. Life gets rough. Stay close to God while you, you know, at this time while life isn't so rough. Um, I want to read in Matthew 14. Um, so, the disciples are chilling on a boat, okay? Um, and then it says, And in the fourth watch of the night, he, ca he came to them walking on the sea. So you got Jesus doing what Jesus can only do, and just straight chilling, walking on water. All right, homeboy's just, all right, walking on water, no big deal. All right, and so they're all on the boat. He's walking on water, and when evening came, he was there alone, but the boat by this time was um, a long way from the land, beaten by the waves and the wind was against them. So 
there was a little bit of rockiness on the boat. So the disciples are kind of like, oh, this is not a good situation. We're on a boat and not good weather. And Jesus is like, no big deal. I'm just walking on the water while all this is going on. So then it says that he walks up to them. But when the, when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and says, is it a ghost? And they cried out in fear. But immediately Joseph, Joseph, Jesus spoke to them saying, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. So situations are going rough and Jesus is like, seriously, it's not that big of a deal. I'm here, relax. And then Peter answered him, Lord, if it, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. All right, I have a lot of faith, but I don't know how much faith I would have if I was chilling on a boat and I just see a silhouette tell me to come walk on the water. That's kind of crazy. Like, I've tried to walk on water before, it doesn't work. <laughs> All right, like, I've tried. I've even put stuff on my feet that I thought would help me walk on water. Look at this straight sink. All right, not a good situation. But Jesus commands him to do it, and he's just like, word, walking on water. So, homeboy's walking on water. He's doing the impossible, okay? Yet, it says in verse 30, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, you of little faith, why do you doubt? So, Paul is straight, walking on water, doing the impossible. What up, copper? I got some Jesus for you if you want to come over here. <laughs> Alright, so, he's walking on water, he's doing what's by definition impossible but as soon as a little bit of waves hit and a little bit of you know wind he starts to panic and doubts that god can take care of him. like how crazy is that like god's already allowed you to walk on water and then a little bit of wind it's like in in my imagination it's like a little breeze it's like a little chill and he's like oh and he freaks out and he starts to drown and jesus saves him and says you have little faith and I feel like that's how we are. We forget how many times in our life God has previously allowed us to walk on water. Okay? Anything that is gone great in your life is solely because God has allowed it to go great in your life. The fact that you wake up in the morning is a miracle in itself. Okay? The fact that you have breath is a miracle itself. Because people can, you know, with science define how you breathe, but they can't tell you like where that opportunity comes from except for the fact that God allows that to happen okay so when things get rough you need to not focus on the little winds and waves that are happening you need to focus on the fact that he's already allowed you to walk on water and just press into that because ahead, because if on. not you're going to sink so I just want to pray over you guys, um, if that's cool with you guys, if that's cool with prayer, yes. just pray with you guys because I've seen too many people that I know from when I was young walk away from God when things got rough in their lives. And I don't want to see that from you guys. And if you don't know God and you're here today, please talk to me or Pat before you get out of here, okay? Anything can happen tonight. Anything can happen tomorrow. I want to make sure that you guys know Jesus and you know who he is and what he's done for you. Because there's nothing like that. Me and the koala will definitely talk to you about it. All right? So I just want to pray with you guys real quick. So if you'll just bow your heads. I want to pray for you guys real quick. Dear Heavenly Father God, um, we thank you so much for these young men and women of the faith, Father. And we just pray right now that you would touch them and that you would guide them, Lord. I pray that, that as life gets rough, Father, that they would not walk away from you, Father, but that they would draw near to you. I pray that they would be encouragement to each other, Lord. I pray that they would continue to be plugged into the church here, Father, allowing older men and women to pour into them in the, in the faith, Father. I pray that you would just grow them, Father. I pray that they would be passionate about reading the Bible. I pray that they would be passionate about doing the things of God, Lord. And I pray that people in their school would see the difference and want to know what it is that they have, Lord. I pray that they would know that you love them and know that regardless of what's going wrong in their household, regardless of what's going wrong at school, whatever's wrong in their you know, boyfriend-girlfriend situation, 
that you stand amazing and you stand loving them at all times, Father. I just pray that you would be with them and bless them and guide these young people. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I don't know if we're allowed to keep going with the music or not. <laughs>